Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the apostolic ministry gift of Dr. R.J. McCowan, and we honor and receive him as our spiritual father. Our hearts are open to receive. Our minds are sharp and alert, transformed and renewed. Our necks are outstretched in anticipation of what the prophet has to say to us on today. We fully expect that this impartation will empower us, will equip us, will position us to carry out our God-given purpose and fulfill our ministry callings and assignments. We set a guard over our hearts and minds and will not allow the enemy to steal this life-changing word seed from our lives. We believe in our heart and now confess with our mouths that this God-inspired word represents hope for today and for all our tomorrows. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, it is another edition of Hope for Today, hosted by yours truly, Dr. R.J. McCowan. I'm glad that you are part here today. Go ahead and notify your friends and family and make them aware that our podcast is actually on now. And I want you to enjoy this. I have some very specific, um, a very specific topic I want to talk about today. And I just got it on the way in. And it's not unusual that God would speak something specifically to me for you. So that gets me excited. It's kind of like what the Apostle Paul did when he came to the church of Ephesus. I believe it was Ephesus in Philippians 4. He said, this I say and testify in the Lord. It meant that he came with, with a very personal and specific word for that particular group at that particular time. I'm noticing some of you on your, hey, Shante, um, Lady Sterex, St Stars, okay. Lady Stars, hey, Kenan. Mr. Oaks, good to see you. Good to hear from you. Uh, Felicia, hey, Annie. I see different ones. Be sure and share a podcast. It's extremely important that you do that. We do want to build a listening audience. We want people to, to uh, tune in, grab a nugget, something they can take to themselves and begin to do research on and discover for themselves right out of the written word of God, what the word of God is actually saying to them in a very personal way. Feel free to make your comments. It's okay. Subscribe. Please subscribe. Subscribe to this. We need you to be a part of this and invite other people in. Hey, Brother Allen, good to hear from you. Miss Ruby, always good to hear from you. Always. Intercessor, intercessor. I know who you are. <laughs> God bless you. Um, Aveline Jones, Miss J, good to hear from you as well. And uh, again, I have a very specific area I need to mention today. Hey, Irene, always good to hear from you. Shalada. You and your spouse, I'll leave it at that. I pray all is well uh, with you guys. Hey, Gerald, always good to hear from you as well. Um, and I do want to mention this very specifically. I heard the Lord, I heard the Lord say to me about uh, wellness or health challenges. And I immediately thought, oh, okay. And I know some of those things can be uh, you know, serious things it can deal with vital organs, things we have to have to, to, to stay in this body and function in this earth. And, you know, and I thought, okay, you're bringing it up to me. I immediately thought about an individual when we were in New York city at Madison square garden, I was actually there with, with pastor Creflo dollar and enjoying a, a powerful conference that he was, uh, hosting and conducting. We were having just a great time. And suddenly this man walks upon the stage. Man, he looked like a walking death, to be honest with you. You could tell he was near the end of his life because of, it was obvious that he was. And yet he had been stricken. Satan had stricken him down with, with H, HIV, the AIDS virus. And he, man, he was skinning bones, you know. And so they laid hands, took the word of God, ministered to him. He stayed there and became a part of the conference as well, which is always important to do. If you notice in the scripture, the Bible said that the people would gather around Jesus and listen what they said. They would come to hear and be healed. A lot of people want to be healed, but they want to do it independent of the person's responsibility to get under the word. Let the word make the difference. 
you notice that in the book of Psalms, I think it's 107, verse 20, somewhere around there, when they through their only listen, their their poor life choices. And sometimes, you know, you can do things and, and insist and just to be just be honest with you, just plain old be stubborn about it and insist on being in environments you don't belong in, indulging in activity you had no business doing. Well, this is what this group group was doing, and it was to their own detriment, and it was self-imposed. But it got to a place where they cried out, man, and, and God sent his word. He sent his word to heal them. So he's a merciful God. So uh, to finish up that story about the man in in, 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 uh, in, uh, in New York, uh, the conference was held the following year. They brought this man up on the stage. He was healthy and strong looking. You would have never known anything was ever wrong with him until they told the audience who this man was. And most of us that were there the following year remembered him and the condition his, his health was in and saw him completely whole and sound and well to the glory of God. So I'm expecting nothing short of that. I don't care how desperate your situation in it, it, you know, situation that you're in the power of God it is the will of God to release the power of God in your behalf. Amen. Hey, Brie. Hey, Pam, Mildred, um, and all you guys. All right. Good to hear from you. Now I'm going to focus here on the word some, but keep commenting. It's fine. And Matthew chapter eight, you know, you know, first, first Peter two twenty four. we may read that. But before I do, I want to go to Psalms 103. Let's go there. Psalms 103. And it's a classic text. And sometimes we hear it so much that we stop listening to it. But you got to listen for it. God is the giver of life. If Satan had his way with you, then he would weaken your life. He would um, steal from your life, of course. I wrote it down. Yeah. yeah um, if, he could have, if he could have his way, he would weaken your life he would shorten your life and if he really could he would take or remove you from take you from the earth or remove you from the earth that's his satanic evil intention and sometimes he come at you in one little you know expression and that, guys you gotta you gotta push back on him the very instant that you sense uh your body attempting to go the wrong direction so at the same time, God is the giver of life. We're going to read that here in Psalm 103 to reinforce your stance and reassure you that God is in favor of you living a healthy, long, and stable, and sound life. We have this saying around here at Numa, you know, we're going to live uh, long and strong. And my, da my daughter added, and nothing wrong. I like that too. So we live, we're, we're trusting God to live a long life, a strong life, with nothing wrong with our life. Amen. So God's a giver of life. And guys, along with this comes also what I would call a insurance policy, so to speak. It's an agreement, insurance policy that has benefits, not just after death, guys, but this, this is in place for life, our time in the earth. They, they are, these benefits are here for us now to put legal demand on. We have a right for health. We have a right, according to the agreement, according to what Jesus did, we just came out celebrating this Resurrection Sunday. Guys, it's just not some holiday. It's a way of life. And we need to know about this resurrected Savior. The Apostle Paul talked about, I know nothing, save him, save Christ and him crucified. He's telling you to learn about his resurrection. Learn what that entails for you. Learn what benefit that is for your life and your entire family unit. Amen. So Psalms 103 and verse one, bless the Lord. I'm reading from the King James. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is uh, that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, verse two, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know, it's, it's important not to forget. It's also important to actually know. We have too many people who are not even aware of the benefits. And they always, they're in God's position, is always in question. If you don't know his benefits, you don't know his will, then God's position for you where these things are concerned are always in question. So you, you, you don't have a heart assurance. You don't have a heart insurance assurance of where God stands with you when you're dealing with, with uh, these kind of situations. Well, come to where the word of God has been taught, pick up the Bible yourself, read about his benefits. 
And verse 3 said, Forgive, he forgiveth all our iniquities. Remember the man that was, uh, I think he was bedridden, lying on the cot, I believe it was. And um, Jesus told him and said, uh, rise and your sins be forgiven you. And the religious community just went bananas. You know, who are you, you to forgive sins? He said, well, watch what Jesus said. Well, what's the difference? I'm paraphrasing. What's the difference? Sins be forgiven you or rise and be healed. What's he saying? It's the same power. It's the same mercy. It's the same God dealing with all that has to do with your wellness and soundness, including forgiveness. God, he don't want to walk around with, with an unforgiving heart. It opens the door to these kind of things. You know, I, 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 I'll throw this in. I, I mean, I, I got up way early in the morning and took several, several notes about a, a spirit that I would be dealing with in the very new fit, near future. Hi, Lee. Hi, Mildred. Hi, Miss Smith. Uh, who else do I see out here? Annie, I see Mildred. I uh, mentioned that. Alexis. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, Pam. Pamela Joyce. And now listen to this. I'm studying about a spirit of jealousy. And as I approach this subject in the very near future, I'm going to uncover the satanic presence of it, the manifested presence of Satan involved. It's nothing to play with. And one of the things that you have to watch about jealousy, how it opens the door to health issues. And when I said that, I said, well, I thought about that too. So this power is here to remove your life from the spirit of those things. So Satan can gain entry into your life and either we can begin to weaken, weaken you, uh, shorten your span or your time in the earth. And if he could, he would completely um, force you to exit at this earth. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to subject yourself. And, hey, Sean, good to see you, man. Um, I look forward to seeing you. Uh, look at this in verse uh, two again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth, who healeth. Yeah, that's something happening all the time. Juju, see you. Who healeth, who healeth. Yeah, that's happening all the time. There's no telling what your life or your body's being relieved of just because you're flowing with God. That what, a lot of things that Satan would do to you would just be a momentary experience. A lot of things he will attempt to do is just be brief and momentary when you're really flowing with God. You're sensitive and then you then you notice that it that it moved away. You'll notice that you got beyond that point. That's that healing power that's not that doesn't stop. It's just not something that just happens every now and then. It's what's happening to your life and to mine consistently and constantly. That's why God don't want us to violate certain things in food groups and all this kind of stuff. Hey Sonia. Uh, Dominique, I killed my, that's my daughter. All right, baby, good to hear from you as well. So he's forgiving our iniquities and he's healing our diseases. What else we want God to do, man? This is here. Jesus saw to it that we could have this benefit. What? He's forgiven. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. He's forgiven our iniquities. He's healing, he's healing all these diseases and he's redeeming your life from destruction. That's, oh my God, look at his position here. It's pretty awesome what God is doing um, in the earth through the redemptive act of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus reinstated us to these benefits. They don't want you to know about them. Too late, we have voices now. I'm one of those voices. Thank God, not the only one, but I'm one of those voices that's reinforcing these benefits and making you aware, reading it right out of the scriptures. You can read it in Matthew 8, 17. He's talking about removing um, uh, sickness and diseases. You see him when he ministered to Paul, excuse me, Peter's mother-in-law, who was actually, she was where she could not function, man. She had such a fever on it. No telling that thing was probably, probably, no doubt, trying to take her out of here. But Jesus showed up and ministered to her, and she got back on her feet. And she began to function as a, probably a wife, a mother, a sister, whatever the case may be, she began to function. Satan wanted her out of commission. And he wants your life or mine out of commission where you don't engage in life and in living again. God forbid. Get up on your feet. Begin to trust God for total restoration for your health. It doesn't matter what it is. He said he healed all 
or uh, forgives all iniquity and, and, and heals all our diseases. So you stand firm. I, I had several scriptures I was going to go to. I'm completely out of time. Um, I'm going to set a date. My Sharia, I may try this next Thursday. I don't know, Thursday night. What I'm saying. I may say, tomorrow is the 4th. Next Thursday night would be the 11th. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm going to do a, hey, Greg Smith. Always good to see you, son. Always good to hear from you. Uh, appreciate you guys. I'm going, um, I'm going to do a Thursday evening, Thursday night podcast starting on April the 11th. Is that right? The Thursday. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of booking in the street. I had checked the calendars. <laughs> So if it changes, don't get upset. I don't think I'm, there's a conflict here. But uh, my intentions are, hey, Lee, where I don't know if I spoke with you earlier. I see you. Um, um, that would be Thursday, not this Thursday, Thursday week. Um, I'm going to do a late evening podcast. That's March, excuse me, April the 11th, Thursday night. It'll either be, I'm going to say 730. 7.30, and we'll spend about a half hour digging in the Word, and that way you can maybe get the children situated and sit down for a moment, get you a cup of tea, coffee, or whatever, and let's kind of walk through the Scriptures. Will I have a guest? At this point, I'm not sure. Again, I'm booking in the street here, but um, in the very near future, look for it. And please, 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 please get this book. It's important. I want you to get this book. It's important that you do. This book that I've written on hopelessness, and just make a decision that I'm not going to let that bleed into my life. And, and, and I don't care how subtle the whispers are. I remind myself how deadly and how lethal that can be because, man, it can rob your heart and rob your life of destiny. Don't you let that happen. Amen. So until um, uh, well, that would be next day, I'm going to do next Wednesday at noon. And then I'll probably just go back to back and do next Thursday. Like, cause I got to give people time to get the word out. So I want you to know, April 11th, 7:30, and at the same time, I'll do go ahead and do the podcast on um, on the the day before, which will be April 10th at noonday. So it's always good to hear from you. Keep letting people know that we're here, and be reminded that man, you don't have to go through any day of your life without expecting to see the goodness of God manifested. Amen. Again, this is Pastor R.J. McCowan remind you that there is hope for today for you and your family. Amen. Until next time, we'll see you then.